Hi, everybody, and welcome to the March 2nd Chaos Common Working Group meeting. It's good to have you here. The minutes are in the chat, and if you could add yourself, that would be awesome. And today's question is if you've ever climbed a tree. Do you remember the last time you climbed a tree? <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of yeses. <laughs> Yeah. Many would, it, here, yeah. would it be Many. embarrassing to say it was only maybe uh one or two years ago for me <laughs> no <laughs> yeah. that's okay that's totally in, okay in flip-flops completely acceptable yeah. <laughs> yeah living on a farm that's for sure that's gonna that's like got cl tree climbing written all over it <laughs> oh yeah yeah we had loads of trees back behind the house we probably had like oak trees which are great for climbing mm -hmm. All right. Um, so today we have a couple things. Um, it's kind of metric. So just as a reminder to everybody, the common working group is is kind of starting to serve as a place where metrics can be developed. And those metrics are the metrics that may come from the metrics model working group, for example. You know, th that a metric model is put together and a metric would be useful, but it doesn't exist in chaos. And so this is really the place to start, I think, start that conversation. Um, I also think that as we build out the user groups, like with uh, you know, the to-do group, the OSPO to-do group working group and OSPO plus plus on the university government side, but a lot of those conversations are probably gonna be a bit um, like more strategic or a little bit higher level and less about like focusing on opening up a new markdown file and and typing. Um, and so I, you know, I think that this group can, as we attend those meetings, kind of listen and then bring what those metrics might be. And we can start them here um, and return them to the groups and say, this is what we hear you talking about. And I think it would be a good place to then have that conversation. Um, so I think this is great for common, um, but it's just something we're gonna, we need to be aware of because I do think this group is gonna be developing probably more than any other group. And on that note, there's a metric that needed to be developed <laughs> as part of a metric model. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of background on this and Don, you can chime in too, of course, but um, yep. Don, uh, you, wanna, you wanna explain it? You go ahead. Oh, right. okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this, <laughs> so this came up um, because in the metrics model meeting, we were reviewing, um, a PR for Compass, where Yahui was showing us how he was um, implementing the metric model, and he had some some questions, and particularly around the time to close metric. And as we were discussing the time to close metric that's currently in the metrics model, the starter project health metrics model, um, what I realized was that time to close wasn't actually the metric that I've been using. Um, and that I kind of described in the metric model. I used it, I think, because it was it was relatively close and I thought it kind of served maybe the same purpose as, as the metrics that, that I use. Um, but, but the more we talked about it, the more I realized the time to close was probably the wrong metric to have in the starter project health model. And what we really needed was something that was more around um, keeping up with change requests or pull requests. So that started me on the path of just creating a new metric with the idea that this would replace the time to close metric in the existing starter project health metrics model. Um, so with that, Matt, did I miss anything? Did you have any other thoughts on this? No, you. that was completely it. Okay. So what I, what I did was I, um, I was going to see if I could find the, just FYI. Okay. Just as over time to close. No, this is oh. just, this was the model that Don had put together. Yeah. And this was kind of what was in question. Yeah. And so if you look at, like, if you scroll down in the metrics model and you look at the time to close, um, this isn't actually, this doesn't have anything to do with time to close. Um, so, so the graph that I'm using really does not reflect the, um, and as I've described it also doesn't, isn't the time to close metric. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, frankly, what I was, what I was thinking there. Um, but, 
But anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna rewrite it. Um, so what I really want is um, what I'm calling keeping up with change requests. And I am I would be super happy if someone else came up with a maybe a better name for that because I'm not I'm not sure that's for for the metric. But the idea is that the, the question it's designed to solve is, is the project keeping up with change requests? So pull requests or merge requests. Um, and, and you can see in the description, I mean, you know, it has uh, I, lots of benefits, but I think the two primary ones are that contributors benefit from actually getting this, a decision about their contribution and change requests are um, less likely to have merge conflicts if they're dealt with more quickly. So I think this serves the project in a couple of different ways. And so I highlighted a couple of objectives. I suspect there are more. So maybe when we um, look at this, I think that all of you will probably have other ideas for, for objectives for this metric, but um, the primary one and the one that I uh, look at most closely is it helps me know whether a project actually has enough people and in particular maintainers to keep up with change requests. Um, and also just measuring this also encourages maintainers to close change requests that will not be merged um, because those often involve difficult discussions and people tend to put them off. And that's, in, in my experience, when you end up with a gigantic pile of neglected pull requests, it's usually because people don't wanna have those conversations about closing pull requests that can't be merged for whatever reason. Um, and then the third one I think is, uh, I thought there was a comment there. Um, I'm not seeing anything. I'm just I, I had put a comment because I said, especially participants from underrepresented groups. Um, and I think that there's probably a better way to say that. Okay. Um, maybe I accidentally closed my comment. Um, but this is the, the DEI piece of it that, you know, these, these neglected change requests can drive people away from the project. And in particular, I suspect that this would be um, more, uh, more prevalent um, with participants who are um, from underrepresented groups, or I don't know. I feel like that's not quite the right way to say that. Um, so I'd be, I'd be happy to have someone reword that. Um, and then the way it's measured is by comparing the total number of open merge requests during a specified time period with the number of merge requests that were closed during that same time period. Um, so projects where the two values are really close together are keeping up with change requests because they're closing most of the open pull requests during the time period. So the total number of open merge requests is always going to be larger than the total number of um, closed pull requests because you can't close more requests than are currently open. Um, so that total will always be larger and the, um, yeah, the closed ones will always be a, a smaller number. But the idea is for that to be a small gap. A um, couple of potential filters. I included the visualization that we were just looking at. Um, and that's that's kind of kind of where I got on this one. Can we use the visualization that's here? Who who did this? That's mine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, so if you look at the link um, back at the uh, the keeping up with, if you yeah. if you look at that link, it's actually directly a link to the Is one that, in the, okay. Okay. The metrics gotcha. model. Um, I'll probably move it just because I think it's better to have it. Do we want to have it just in one place and link to it, or should we have it in the? I've seen, the same? Both. I've seen it in both right. before. Some of the metrics models carry the same visuals <laughs> as they're <laughs> describing it. Yeah, yeah. But, so but the question the question is, do we want that in two different repos as two different graphics, or should I link to the one in the metrics model repo? I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, probably we want to have that graphic in the common repo. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. So I'll just copy it to the common repo and link to the link to it in there when I okay. actually do the PR for this. Okay, Kevin. Uh, so is this? Is this metric specifically about maintainers keeping up with change requests? Um, typically, yes. Um, only, but only because it's it's maintainers who can usually actually merge the pull request. Okay. So um, the but it depends. It depends a lot um, on how the project has defined their roles. So they might have other roles that are able to merge pull requests that are not necessarily called a maintainer. 
So they might have a separate committer role. They might have a approver role. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I tend to loosely kind of think of all of those as maintainers. So if we were to call this, if we were to call this, uh, this metric attention to change requests, would that make sense? And would that be inclusive of uh, maintainer response to to the pull request, like a comment, uh, maintainer review of a pull request or change request, and maintainer merging of a pull request? It would be inclusive of all those things. Uh, no, this metric is specifically about the close activity. Whether it's a with merge or a close without merge, but the the actual act of closing the pull request, because I think some of those other things are already defined in various metrics. So we have things like we have a bunch of change request metrics, but none of them were so a lot of them were kind of the things that you talked about. So you know a response, a comment, a review. There wasn't actually because I I did look through the metrics like well maybe I. Maybe there is, and I couldn't find it, but I couldn't see one that was specifically about um, closing the change requests. So maybe attention to change request closure? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We could use ratio to ratio of. Yeah, is this a ratio for you, Don? I don't. I don't know if you use that word anywhere in here, and it is kind of implied here. Yeah, you're looking at a, for a one to one essentially. One comes in, one goes out, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we do have one that is about a ratio, but it's overall like oh, out of all the pull requests, how many do you accept in? So I don't want to confuse it with that one because that's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's pull requests merged um, or change requests merged. Um, no, I mean, that that definitely that definitely makes sense. Can you say it one more time, just so I can think about it one more time? I don't think we said it once fully. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin has in there There's something about a ratio. Yeah, um, change request okay. closure ratio is what Kevin has in there. I'm just typing them in as you, you all come up with them. I mean, essentially it's the ratio between what comes in and what goes out. You want a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. So I don't mm -hmm. know how to say that, but <laughs> that's what we want. I do I do kind of like change request, uh, change request closure ratio. I don't know what do other people think about that. I'm okay with it, yeah. And the description will help sort that out a little bit too. Yeah. We can like uh, just like think about it too until next time, you know, I mean, or to whenever we don't have to decide right this second, but I think that's a good start. I like it. Yeah. But I do think if we're going to frame it as a, as a ratio, um, that might mean tweaking some of the other um, other bits to talk more about how it's it's a ratio rather than because I talked about it as like like looking at the gap between the two numbers, um, but I think it might be it might be better to talk about it in the context of of a ratio just to be kind of clear about What's it. The, what would be the kind of the one sentence takeaway if it if it's a ratio? It's the um, ratio between. It's the ratio between the total number of open pull requests in a time period um, against the total number of pull requests closed during a time period. With the idea that, as Elizabeth said, you are looking, the ideal is a one-to-one. -one. So let me ask this question. Do people think that a ratio is probably the right approach for this metric? Is there any disagreement about that? No, I like ratios just because okay. they're specific. Okay. So it also I might, oh, sorry, Don. It, I was just going to say it also might allow for the fact that, you know, uh, an acceptable number of, of the difference between one project might, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a large project might have a bigger number than a smaller project, but the ratio might be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a question for you, Don. In what Kevin's typing, 
is it the total number of open change requests or opened? Open. With an ED. No, no, no ED. Oh, no ED. It's, okay. It's the total number of open pull requests. Okay, because that number could float. Like it does. From one. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the total number, the reason I use total number of open pull requests is because that's the total number no matter when they were opened. Um, whereas if you just look at the number of pull requests that were opened during a time period, you can easily, easily close all of those and still have a gigantic backlog. Um, so it, it hides, it hides the backlog if you, okay. if you just look at the number that were opened during okay. a particular period. Great. Thank you. So this is kind of inclusive of that, uh, technical debt or yes yes yeah that makes total sense so can we would it be okay <laughs> if we i'll just pause the recording and stop my share and the four of us just kind of spend a little bit of time going through this or don do you want that or oh um what else do we have on the agenda because my my thinking was that we've spent 20 minutes well not counting the first five minutes where we talked about plants um so we spent 15 minutes talking about this one metric i'm happy to go off and rework it as a ratio metric myself if we have other things that we need to get through in the rest of the meeting um if we don't have a bunch of stuff that we need to get through i'm also happy to just do this as a as a group i'm i'm good with either one depending on what else we need to cover Okay. Um, well, on the agenda, I wanted to talk about. Um, so let's give me the action item to rework this as a ratio metric. If okay. we have time at the end, we can always come back to this. How's that? Okay, great. Okay. All right, thank you, thank everybody. You. Super helpful. Good conversation. All right. Um, okay, so the we have other metrics in progress, but um, before we get to those, and Vinod's not on right now, um, but before we get to those, I did want to just talk a little bit about the knowledge base kind of at large, but then specifically focusing on the community resources and the reason that this comes up is because right now our contributing files across the project are inconsistent. And I think our readmes, I don't, they're probably inconsistent too. And Don had some suggestions on copyright stuff. So they're kind of a, I think there's a little bit of interest in kind of cleaning those up and just ensuring that they're consistent across the project. And I think Kevin, you had pointed out that we have done this in the past, but it's probably important to do it <laughs> occasionally again. Probably needs to be done every couple of years. Yeah, things things drift. So I think we're kind of at that spot right now where we need to do it. Um, so as I go into the templates, um, into the templates part of the knowledge base, I will say that I absolutely love having the templates in the knowledge base and accessible through the website. It's much easier to find all of these templates um, and they are, they're here, which is great. Um, I do have a couple comments and I'd love to get people's feedback on the template, just kind of how, at the highest level, how we're displaying the template. So in this situation, like the metric template, it shows up as a page here in the knowledge base. Some of you may know where I'm going with this. Others like the contributing.md is a link to a contributing to the contributing page on GitHub. So it's a slightly different design and this isn't even the contributing document. The let, let me just the readme is the same. So the readme where um here it's a nothing at this point. So we're we're some of them go out to GitHub, some of them kind of go to the what I think is the wrong place. Some go nowhere, and some are on on this in this knowledge base. So, how sorry, let me ask one more question. Um, how often are are these pulled in from from GitHub? I don't know the answer to that. What do you uh, mean? How often? When you visit the page, it's automatic. So it's because I uh, because Matt merged some changes to the metrics template. Oh, you're talking about when is it cached? Is it is this just cached? Is that what we're seeing? Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
Um, nope. so I'm not. I'm not exactly certain on the specific amount of time for the caching, but it's probably. It might be a day or two. Yeah. Okay. In That's some fine. cases, and I can. I can. Uh, or we, we we can clear the cache if we if we want it to. If you shift that's immediately. Shift refresh, it should clear your cache. I did. I think. Oh, you did and it didn't work? No. So we, we do have server side caching as well. So the 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 server side caching, uh, we have we have to clear that on the WordPress site. Okay. So I I generally do that anytime we uh uh pull a new page in. Uh, but I don't do it uh, when just GitHub pages are. Uh, okay, updated. that's fine. I, but it, it, it um, will eventually get there. Okay. The reason I asked is because I wanted to make sure that I had submitted the pull request against the right um, markdown file. Uh, but it sounds like if it's cached, it's probably it's probably the right place. So, do people have a just at the highest level a preference to, for example, see this template here? Or would they prefer to see it like as a link to say, thanks for coming to this page. Here's a link to the GitHub, the, the template on GitHub. You know what I mean? To yeah. I would like to see it as a link because I'll be honest, this um, actually doesn't help me at all because I need the raw markdown. Yeah. So 100%. here, I don't even know where to go. And then I end up just going to the, I'm like, oh, well, I'll go to the community repo and search for template. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, and then, and then I grab the raw markdown and paste it into a Google doc. Agreed. Um, also so agreed. Pra practically what that'll mean is that each of these templates will need two pages built in the, uh, in the community handbook. Why is that? So you'll need, you'll need one page that, uh, kind of provides a basic description and the link. And then you also need the one page that provides the actual template. Well, I think we're saying instead of the actual template, we just do the link, how the okay. contributing is now, right? So you'll, so we'd need to create a page that has that link in it. Yeah, or just change. Yeah, the, the current one that says metrics template, just change it to say, you can find the metrics template here and link to that. Yeah, and what he's saying is you need one page for that. And then we just have to, we don't need a second page because that'll just link out to the markdown. Yeah. But he's yes. saying that this pulls in the markdown page. Yeah, so, so this is this is a page. Yeah. And then the template is a page as well. I see. Um, what I would suggest, maybe instead of doing two pages for each of these, um, like what we have here, uh, maybe we just have, if you go back to that templates page, maybe instead of having all of all of these links. Do we just have like one page that has links to all of the templates? Because we could have a, you know, I don't know, a templates page about about our templates page, something. So for example, this would just say like templates as an example, the contributing MD, and then you click it and it's just got a list of all of the yeah. templates that we have, like to the respective markdown pages. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, because that way you just have one, one page and you wouldn't have to duplicate. Mm -hmm. So, so there may there may be some value in having the the metric template displayed on the website, and if there is if there's at least a little bit of value in that, maybe the easiest answer is to just add the link to the template MD file at the top of the at the top of the document. Hmm. I'm, I'm just have you. a just have a bit of text at the top of that that uh that links to the the markdown. I've I've had to use this a couple times and I just I'm like you Don I leave and in fact all of this stuff is just like it's I think it's a bit overwhelming and for I don't know I guess my inclination is to just not even have it here but I always just go straight to the repo I don't even go here I just go straight to the repo to grab the template yeah, but but to Kevin's point um, we do have we do have options, right? We could put if you go back to the metrics template, you could put the link to the markdown at the very top, um, so that makes it easy for us to find. Because I think that what we what we need to think a lot about is that the knowledge base is not really actually for us, right? The people on this call, like the knowledge base is more for the brand new contributor, and would they benefit by being able to see the template that we use for for metrics just right here kind of have a look at how we 
how we develop the metrics. Um, you know, it's got some so maybe of Maybe they're not, maybe they're not sure which template they're looking for. Yeah. So they, can, they can pop it open. Oh yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Okay. I mean, that's, that's yeah. So. I, mean, I, I don't know. Like we're proposing a lot of solutions. It might be, I don't know. It might be worth asking maybe a couple of people who are newer to the community and see if they have any opinions opinions or maybe put a put a thread out on discourse and ask people what they think i could do that um but i do uh, think what we have isn't working particularly well we need to find no something. it's not i love the idea i love it i love i actually like this look because i know exactly what template i'm looking for just from this like two clicks i'm like oh read me template contributing template in theory is the code of conduct a template or is it actually it's, the code of conduct? To the code of conduct. <laughs> okay. Then so that's probably that probably exists elsewhere, right? No, that but that is a template actually. Um, because the template for the code of conduct is we if you go back to what was before. Whoops. Yeah, this. This is what we want people to put in each of the individual repositories. Right. Oh, we I don't want we them duplicating the whole code of conduct. Um, we want them to put exactly this in there. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I. So the, yeah. So in this case, Sorry. that is the template right there. So that's very confusing. Uh, it is. If I was if I was looking for the uh, yeah if I if I was looking for the the text that I need to add for the code of conduct in the in the repository that would be very confusing to me. Yeah. Also, I don't know if that, just as an aside, that code of conduct, do we even have that list anymore since we went away from the mailing list stuff? Like if you click on that, that says the chaos inclusion at list. No, no, go back. Yeah, right there, chaos include. Like, I don't think, I don't even know if we have that now since we are shutting them down. So we need to think about that. Just another. We probably do. I could email it. I could email to it and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Just making sure that, that that one also didn't get shut down. Uh, yeah, because that should go to, I think it was Georg and Armstrong. Yeah. And there's, I think, one other person. I have not shut down a list called Chaos Inclusion. I actually forgot that that was there. <laughs> that sounded terrible, but yeah, I forgot that. So you're okay. So this is helpful. Um, so what I'll do is I'll open up a, a thread just to kind of articulate what we're talking about here. I don't want to keep it open too long. I want to see if people have immediate opinions just because I'd like to get this um, looking pretty good and being useful. Um, what I am kind of hearing is if I looked at the code of conduct template, that as as an example here um kevin it, this wasn't clear that this is the template so i mean some text here that would say you know this link takes you to our code of conduct this is actually the template that we want you to put in each one of your like just more explicit on what that text is about um and then potentially below kind of in this white space here you know above where this article was helpful we would potentially just have the entire code of conduct again for people to see it on this page is that correct no you wouldn't include the you don't want to include the code of conduct in this at all because that's not the that's not actually the template right so the the template is this bit of it's this bit of text that points to the code of conduct because we only want one copy of the code of conduct we don't want multiple copies of the code of conduct floating around but in each repo right I mean, but yeah, but it's just the uh, it's just the text that we were just seeing prior that we want to add to each repo. So this bit here is actually the text that we want to add to the repo. Yeah. So remember, each repo points to the code of conduct. We're not storing the code of conduct on each repo. Oh, yeah. so okay. if you go if you go to the um, to this you. one, for example, I get you. Uh, yeah. Okay, I just have to remember what we point to and what we have. Because then the contributing is in there, the README is in there, but the code of conduct points. So we we definitely need more direction on this one. Okay, right? but it's, this would essentially look the same with better clarity. Yeah, I, th I think we would need text that says something to the effect of, 
uh, create a code of conduct uh, .md file in the repository, paste this code, paste this marked out into that into that file. Point to this code of conduct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the metrics template different scenario here would necessarily contain like a link up here in this white space to the github repository that says if you would like the just the markdown click here easy for copy and paste and then we would still keep this here just as a reference point for people we, we could otherwise uh, or or we could follow the 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 other pattern which would link to uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe we need maybe we need direction on this template as well, right? So maybe there's a maybe we create some way of uh, at the top of each of these templates documents we we create kind of a separate area where we provide like actual direction for what this is, right? So this this is the the metrics model template. You can edit it, on, in, or you can get the markdown here. It's used for this. Okay, I'm. This is getting super complicated. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was just hoping to like. <laughs> You're right, though. It's done. It's done kind of in in different ways, and in some of the some of these are kind of confusing. So it is kind of a. It is a bit. It is problematic. So I yeah, and I was just I was just looking too. Um, I. Um, I just did a quick uh, GitHub API query to see what the code of Google Docs looked like for our repositories. And all of the ones I found so far, I haven't iterated through all of the repos. Most of them have pasted the some version of the entire um, entire code of conduct, um, including, yeah, some of this isn't good. I don't think. Oh, I thought you. Were, I thought you all were frozen there for a moment. No, no, no. I, was no I, was, I was looking and I was trying to trying to understand what. So these are the ones in the ones I'm coming up that are coming up first are the ones in Grimoire Lab. Can you look at the? Sorry, can you go back to the code of conduct and scroll to the bottom of it, the actual code of conduct? Okay, so it's. Uh, I see the version history. Um, yeah, they've basically, for all the Grimoire Lab ones and Augur as well, they've just grabbed the, the whole text of the Code of Conduct. This whole thing and just put it in their repo. And then a bunch of others are just pointing to this is what it sounds like. I think, I think so. Yeah. So far, I haven't, I haven't found any of the ones that are pointing to it just because I, I would need to iterate through this with some, okay. some Python to, to okay. page through the results. And I haven't done that yet. Um, but so here's the question, given that nobody seems to be doing that, um, is that what we want to do? Um, is to change all of these codes of conduct and have them point, have them have this so that if we make a change to the code of conduct, you only have to make it once. Yeah, and everyone's using the same code of conduct. Yeah. And it ensures that everyone's using the same code of conduct. Uh, so, I mean, we, we did have, we had considerable discussion about this when we implemented this, so it's yeah. it's unfortunate that we're not uh we're not doing it. No, <laughs> like, a lot of uh, how many repositories we have? Forty nine repositories. Let me look through. I I can probably grab all fifty. Um, because in particular the chaos ones are. Um, oh, go back, go back to that. Yeah. This might be why. Oh, is it automatically being populated? I think so. Yeah, I think that we're we're populating all of we're yeah, we're populating. So sorry, I'm not very articulate articulate today. Um, so the thing with putting it here is that when a new repository is created. 
it will grab all of these files and put them in the new repository. Um, I do not believe that if we make a change to this, that it then changes it in all of the repositories. I think it's a copy, not a uh, not linked in not any way. Thing. Yeah. So what we should have done, I think, was put that other version of the code of conduct, which links to the main code of conduct in this GitHub yeah. directory. I think we didn't think about that when we did it. So essentially this page would just become a link to that code of conduct. Yeah, it would look exactly like what we had in that template. So if you go yeah. back, it would look exactly yeah. like this. Gotcha, gotcha. In the .github file. Yeah. yeah. But then can you, if you put it in the .github file, you can't have repos pull off that, can you? If they already exist. Okay. All right, well. So do we want to go back and make this change across? I, mean, do, I do. I mean, this is part of, this is part of like what I'm trying to, yeah. <laughs> like looking at these templates, this is like, I think we need to address this and we can't, and not just the code of conduct, like all <laughs> those things, like just be like, oh, <laughs> all good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, I kind of think maybe we should think about this a little bit more. That's fine. I'm, I'm totally like. fine. Yes. Thinking about this. Um, I'll kind of go back. I, I, I thank you for the conversation on code of conduct template. Because that actually is really, really helpful. Um, do you want me to, I can send you a, a quick report, Matt, that's that'd be just yeah. like, a, um, can I just send you a big, big chunks of JSON? Is yes. that all right? Okay. <laughs> Cause that way I don't have to do anything to it. I'll that's just... completely fine. And then I think, so that may help in that regard, you know, then I think we might want to consider how we present this, whether it's, I think the question comes down to whether it's a just a link to the GitHub file or it's a link plus this. And the same would hold true for the metrics model template. Is it just a link to the template in GitHub or is it a link plus this? And then so on and so forth, uh, kind of down the line here. Yeah. Uh, Because I think the re the rest would be code of conduct seems a little bit unique in this situation. Yes, agreed. And if it's if it's being populated automatically by the uh, by the organization, I don't know that we need to keep it in here. To be honest, probably, probably not, because it's not a template that we would necessarily want people to reuse or or, yeah. or edit. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we would just have contributing. And then, I, I mean, some of these templates too, I do wonder about like just as as being present. So read me for sure, metric model, um, metric contributing. The release issue template, I think is good. The revising, these are checklists. So I probably, these probably need to be, this needs to be labeled as an issue template. You know, not just a revising metric template. Okay. Okay, I will say on that that contributing MD file, uh, that document that it points to is not a great document. Uh, I think the uh, the community the community team or the community handbook team at one point had uh, uh, had that as a to do to yeah to, i don't know that they got to it uh, but it, it's not a it doesn't align well with the way we work no or, so then i agree so then let me suggest this that i'll start taking a look at the code of conduct stuff just to get into your point kevin like not just rush to do this right away um maybe we could answer just first answer the question of how we want this page for example to look and then I 100% agree with you, like the template for the README probably needs to be updated itself. And the template for contributing <laughs> totally needs to be updated as well. Yeah. So that, that contributing 
although that the text that goes with that contributing is is exactly the it should be the same text as the uh uh the code of conduct one so we probably don't need to include this one in the templates either but so but this document here does need to be addressed at, um, or it does it. now we had don had pointed out i think in the community call that the contributing markdown file is a file that we need to have in every repository because there's a like github check of some sort to, yeah. and so we do we, need to have the code of conduct in every single repository as well but we can just have a link to it right we can, oh, have, that. But we can have a link to it because that oh, will okay. still mean that we have a code of conduct file oh that, that okay. highly so, then to Kevin to your point then yeah so in the same way we would just we would still can create that contributing.md file and then we point it to and the then that that one contributing md file that we have for the entire and then we can get rid of this as a template yeah and, and you could you can add that contributing md to the the github organization uh, level to, to automatically populate that which it is there I think yeah. yeah I think that also would go sorry I had to step out I think that would also go to like all the grimoire lab all that stuff too so we were a little bit wanted you know to maybe check with them or something i remember yeah i think i think it needs to be i think it needs to be edited and then it maybe needs to link to maybe some more specific documentation right so if we if we create a high level one then it can also we can also have a line where it links to specifically contributing to augur or specifically contributing to grimoire lab because uh, right now it's just kind of a general contributing to GitHub type the project. Right? So, well, yeah, it's, it's kind of github -y and we want to get rid yeah. of that together and just say, if you're new to GitHub or Git, go, yeah. go, go watch this video. <laughs> yeah, it should, it should be more about the specific ways to uh, contribute to chaos. Yes. And yeah, because some... GitHub has way better documentation on yeah. like how, to, how to do stuff on GitHub than we're ever going to put in a contributing file. But this is a mistake everyone makes contributing files. Like I've, I've been trying to get us not to do that at VMware because we we also do this with our contributing files at, at VMware. And it's like, no, it's not, just link to it. Yeah, yeah, okay. the document can link to the GitHub document on how to contribute, it can link to Augur, it can link to okay. all those this places. Is, this is, yeah, so this is super helpful. So what I'm understanding, okay, I'm not even gonna repeat it, but this is super helpful. and. Maybe my repeat would be, it sounds like there's a series of maybe three steps to start cleaning this up. And the, the last step is actually changing the content in contributing or in README. We'll get there, but let's first clean up some of that top level look as to how we get at these documents. Okay, super helpful. Thank you, everybody. I don't know what my action is, is to <laughs> do all the things. <laughs> I think your action item is just the... Uh... Just the code of conduct MD file. If I was understanding that correctly, just uh, yeah. at the at the organization level and um, and the determination of how to present the the templates. Yeah, like um, link or link plus text. Basically, it sounds like we're all in agreement that we want it to link out to GitHub because we, we do want that raw markdown file at some point. Yeah. And so it's whether or not we put the text in. Okay, that's super. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, we're done. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all very helpful. So, all righty. Thank cool. you, everybody. Great conversation. Very, very, very good. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Till next and time. You those two JSON messages and, or JSON files in Slack. Okay, right on. Okay, okay. thanks. All right.